All right, we're at time, so let's get started, folks. Welcome to another weekly edition of YFTT, Yoga Byte Friday Tech Talks, talks by engineers, for engineers. So, um, and this week, uh, I mean, I have with me, no stranger to you guys, Frank Patchard, like as you guys all know, um, and we're going to talk about role level security, column level encryption, and other other ways of building security into the application by design, right, right from day one. Um, so Frank, maybe a quick intro and take it away. Uh, oh, no. by, by the way, folks, uh, you know, you can just ask your questions right in the LinkedIn comments. You can post them on our community Slack, yogabyte.com forward slash Slack and, and in, in the YFTT channel, right? So, and, and um, uh, we'd love to hear from you guys, questions, comments, thoughts. All right, Frank, really take it away now. So, and to encourage Christian, I, I directly go to uh, to the the demo screen. I have no slide. The idea is to show the, the features how, how they work, what we need to take care, and uh, yeah, basically those features are just coming with Postgres. That the, the big advantage to be to be Postgres compatible by reusing Postgres, we we get those features from from the SQL layer, from uh, from Postgres. So. What I will show first, I will show, of course, we are talking about security and we use uh, two users and I set my prompt so that we sh see exactly which user I'm connected to. Um, so here I'm connected as Yugabyte, the, the, the super user. I create a user zero that will own my tables and the user one that is the application connecting uh, to simulate that. And then I will connect with user zero and create a table. And very simple example, just to give the idea, the concept, I will create a table secure messages where I store an ID and a label. I will store a message also, but a label that will tell me if um, if the message that I store there is public, confidential, uh, the, the idea is to, to do some kind of uh, label security. So then the message. So in the table for each me message, I have a label uh, giving the level of, of security. And then I insert a few rows just to see the different ones. So a public message, a confidential message, they're all there. As the owner of the table, I can see everything, of course. Now, if I connect as another user, I select, I have not the permission to read the table. I need to grant it. So here we are in uh, the role-based access control. The owner, so user zero, needs to grant. I grant all here, uh, so select, insert, update, uh, delete to user one. And then if I connect with user one, now I can see my table, but I see everything. And this is where we need something with a finer grain because for the moment, either you see all the table with all data or you see, or you see nothing. And now my idea is to, to allow only some rows on, on this security label. So I go back to user zero. I will switch back and forth be between those users because I define everything with the owner, user zero. And for the moment, I'm just enabling row level security. Mm -hmm. If I query my table, I'm the owner, I still see the data. This doesn't concern me as the owner, but if I connect as user zero, as user one, if I select, I see nothing. And that's different from the message uh, where I don't have the permission for the table. I have the permission for the table, but I enabled row level security. And for the moment, there are no policy that allows me to see data. And if you look at the execution plan, then we can see that this is something that is done by the query planner or just before by, by the rewriter. So it's not something that, that we can hack. It's really the database that is adding some filters so that the, nobody can see the data. Okay, so now I will create a policy. So I connect back as user zero. Now that role level security is enabled, I can create a policy on it. So a name for the policy, um, the name of the table there, I 
can create a policy for users' roles and for actions. Here, I just say all. My policy will concern all DML. The, the stuff on the right is a comment, right? Like just to explain. Yeah, it. yeah. I, I just hash, put a comment just just to 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 remember that you have also the the action. Uh, uh, you, you can have different policies for different actions, and uh, the user. So it can be also a role that we grant for the moment. I just user user, and then the most important, we have a using clause that will be uh, added to the where clause by the query planner. So here I define, I use the colon that is in this table. It could also be a complex query, but here I have the label in the table and uh, I allow all operations for user one only when the label is public or confidential. And now directly, if I connect as user one, if I select, I see only those two rows. So we really have a, a, a level of security by row there. And if and, I explain, yeah. Yeah, and, and Frank, this is dynamic, right? So every time user zero changes stuff, you will get the right combination yeah. of things, correct? Yeah, and I can see the, the, the policy. I, I Even if I cannot see the policy, I can see it in the execution plan uh, because it's, it's just a filter added uh, into the table. So here I can see I had four rows and the result is two rows, two have been removed by the filter and the filter is not something that I can control. I have nowhere close there. It is controlled automatically by the database. And the same for inserts. If I insert a message with a public label, I can insert it. If I try to insert something with a label uh, that I'm not allowed to, to insert, then I have an error message telling me that it is uh, violating the policy. And if you are the owner, you can keep inserting with new security levels or labels, whatever that is, and yeah. you can create new ones and that should still work with the existing data because there's the any, you already have defined the rules, correct? Yeah, and you can have a lot of users or roles and uh, with different uh, privileges. So so this can be, uh, uh, this and, can be complex or not, depending on, on really what- And the filter want. rules, right? Do you always have to say it's equal to in this case, public or confidential, or or can you invert this and say anything but top secret? Can you in, is that possible? You can uh, by default the policies just add allows rows, but you can also have a restrictive policy if you want to 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 remove rows that uh, that follow the, the condition. But but the the where clause that is added can be very complex. For example, if you have an application that stores the access to documents in multiple tables, because there are multiple levels of authorization in, in the application, you can have subqueries in it. Of course, it's important to think about the where clause that will be added uh, because you may need to index it, yeah. and, uh, but, but it, this can be really complex. Yeah, it can sense. be as simple as looking at the uh, uh, label or as complex as looking at the hierarchy in the uh, in the organization of the enterprise and, and deciding that we can show the salaries for the manager is uh, direct employees, not for, for the others by department uh, and uh, HR with a different policies, but yeah. Makes sense. So it, it, sense, it, can, yeah. it can be complex and also the big advantage, like uh, all SQL features, it's declarative. You declare it once and you don't have to put it in your code. If you do that in the application, you need to be sure that all the different access to the data must uh, follow the same policy. Here it is declarative. Yeah, makes sense. Yeah, awesome. Fantastic. And yeah, just showing that, of course, we can index if I create an index on it and I do an execution plan, I can see that the index can be used. So if we have com something complex, we can also think about indexing, about uh, uh, duplicate indexes, all the techniques we have to, to tune that. Got it. So I think all, all of this is great. I think, um, like you said, this, I think, moves the burden of enforcing security to the database. All, all of that is great, right? Like, but 
um, how like one common question that comes up is like you know you can do something similar with a view right like you can kind of restrict what is seen what is not seen so how would you describe the difference between views whether it's materialized views or just you know on the fly views versus rls the, the the problem of view and i i will show what happens when the view is created by the owner the, the view can also show a specific view but you are more limited in in the way uh, for example if you have different policies then you will have different views to maintain and uh, and the views currently I, I think in the next postgres version we will have the possibility to have uh, a view that uses the, the user privileges, but currently the view is owner privileges. And I, I can I can show it uh, because that's something we, we need to take care of when we use um, whole level security with views. Here as the as the owner, I create a view on, on my table, just a simple view. I grant select on the view to user one. And if I connect as user one and select from the view, then it can see everything from the view. Mm. Because the, the policy, the policy doesn't apply, not because it is a view, but because the view belongs to the owner, user zero, and the, the user zero can see everything. So the view is really an encapsulation where you can you can do things with the owner privilege, with the definer uh, privilege, uh, not the user one. So if you, there is also a, a, a way to avoid that. In addition to enabling role level security, I can force it. And this, by forcing it, even the, the owner will not see the role. The policies will apply even uh, for the owner. So for example, if I select now as the owner, I cannot see the roles. And then of course, if I connect as um, sorry, if I connect as user one, if I select from the view, I say nothing because then the policy applies, but because because it belongs to the owner. Yeah. So that that's something to take care, of and it's possible to uh, to also apply the policy to the owner. Got it. And but but there are always some users who you who will uh, be able to have access to data. For example, if you want to dump the data for uh, for specific reasons, uh, then you can use a super user that can uh, uh, bypass it. It's Got also it. a, a system privilege where you can bypass the the policies or not. Got it. So in this case, if you're building it with a view, you pretty much have to build one view for, like you said, every filter condition or every where clause and then the, the issue will become for the end user they might not know which view to connect to at the end because they each yeah. one will have a different name and they will get more confusing right yeah you need to to have uh, diff different uh, views and and uh, grants uh, on the views and and you cannot do also complex things with the views or or, or then you, you will have a, a lot of view yeah so it's really something in addition to to the existing possibilities. It, it, it's not an alternative, it's in addition to role based to views and to. And here's, uh, here's another question. Security. I don't know why somebody would want to do this, but I'm just curious. Does RLS work on views? No, no, no. Currently in, in Postgres, so you don't have that. No. Got it. And uh, yeah. probably it does work on materialized views, though. That's not. a good question. I think so because in behind it is a, a it is a table. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. That makes sense. I think. Uh, and and can you talk about like? Okay, I think the use cases are great. Can you talk about some? Uh, yeah, or or what else do you have for us? Maybe maybe finish your thought and then I would like to. Ask yeah, no, because the time is going. Uh, that's right. Uh, better talking about the, the use cases. So yeah. Uh, yeah, label security, like like with this label uh, saying who can say uh, see what. In uh, GDPR rules, for example, there is, uh, in, in, in the rules, there is uh, the notion of consent. A user must consent that his data can be updated or not, uh, displayed or not. And that can be a flag in a table. Uh, the right for ARG role also in, in GDPR, uh, a, a user, a, a user in, in um, a, a European citizen uh, uh, can ask that all its data is erased from your system. And that's not easy to do immediately. 
Uh, but at least if you have a flag, it is not visible, and then it will be only an administrative uh, uh, background job that, that will uh, clean up. So yeah, can be used also for that. Uh, complex things or uh, just showing the salary for, for, for your team or, or, uh, or your employees. And uh, a use case on multi-tenant, but I will show you, I have a blog post about it. If I find, sorry, where it is, yeah. So role level security is very useful for multi-tenant where you have a kind of a SaaS application where you have a lot of customers and you don't want to have thousands of schemas of databases. So you put everything in the same table. You have an ID that is the, um, uh, the tenant ID. And then you want to, to secure that so that a customer can see only its own data. So in this blog post, I applied that to PG Bench, uh, just making, uh, making it multi-tenant and I go just quickly on it. I, I will put the link in the chat uh, on LinkedIn if people want to look at it later, but easy to find also on, on Google. Basically the idea is that I, I create the PG Bench table with a tenant ID. Yep and uh, enable role level security. I insert data, I will go fast on all that. And we have a policy that uses, here yeah, I used a setting, uh, the same setting that we can set with, uh, to set the Postgres parameter. We can also have application setting, which here I call RLS um, tenant ID. So the idea is that the application for a user will set the tenant and then all queries will be the same everything will uh, will be applied transparently by whole level security according to this uh, session variable and just yeah saying that i i did it really transparently to be able to run pg bench so so this variable can be uh, sent uh, with pg options and i think the example yeah when when we do some queries I have something where I do a delete, I think. Let me just check, yeah. So here is an example where I set the tenant ID 42. And then when I delete everything, because I don't have a where close, only 42, uh, the rows from uh, tenant ID 42s are deleted. And here I just set the tenant ID to another one. And I can see that I have other rows from there. So. Only by setting the tenant ID from the application. So the application is responsible to match the tenant ID to the user that is connected. And then everything is done by the database with um, uh, by applying the policies. And also, but I will go fast on that because we have just uh, 10 minutes also. When you have this tenancy, uh, it can be interesting for to partition that. Maybe not for all your customers, but if you have 10,000 customers in a SaaS application, maybe you have a few VIPs where you want to partition to be able to, to put them in a specific um, uh, nodes, for example, to physically isolate them. And the database takes care that someone connected with a tenant ID will never see the data from the other. Yep. So that's uh, uh, an interesting use case that yeah, for the cloud. And uh, yeah, let's talk about colon level encryption. Uh, another security feature, we have seen how to do something by uh, by rows and, and now we will see something by colon. So I have just a quick example on the same table. I just created the extension PG crypto because this is where the functions come from. Uh, and I connect as user zero. This is my table, but of course I see nothing because I forced before the, the policy. Let me uh, just find no force. Okay, so now this is everything. And now I will encrypt it. And I will use the same as, as in my blog post, uh, a session variable there. 
So again, to explain what you're doing, you are going to make sure that a particular column is encrypted and cannot be seen by the database administrators. I mean, you can see yeah. it, you can't make sense of the data, right? And this is very different from encryption at rest, right? Like that, that you apply to the whole set of data on disk. I think there the idea is if somebody were to get a hold of the data files, they can't make sense of it. These are different features, right? This one is more application focused at runtime. That is more like transparent to the application and happens at a lower level, correct? Yeah, and encryption at rest protects for, from people who can access the storage. Here, you 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 protect from people who can access the the, the database. Even uh, even the DBA cannot see the uh, the real value. Like so, if there's a credit card or some you know password or whatever, you would start using. Yeah. yeah. and that's also mandatory for GDPR uh, for for everything that uh, that belongs to people. Yeah. 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 So here I, I just did an update an, uh, an update with my key. So I've set the key as a, as a variable um, a session va variable there, and I encrypt it with the uh, the function from uh, PG Crypto to encrypt it. Now, if I select, I cannot do anything with this data. Mm -hmm. And if I connect as my user one, so this is only the rules because I still have my policy, but cannot see uh, the data. If he wants to decrypt it, then the application will set the key. And now using the decrypt function, I can see the data. And this key is not stored in the server there. It is just in the backend uh, of my session. So the only thing that is important is that you take care that you remove the key um, when you release the connection to the connection pool because you don't want it to, to be used by another connection. So usually you, you do that when you grab a connection and, and when you release the, the connection. But then it's only in, in, in the private memory of the process doing that. It's not visible uh, from something that is stored. And just one thing to take care, if you, I, I did it, quickly by setting it, but be careful because if you do that, you may see it in PG stat statements. So if the goal is really that the DBA cannot see it, you don't want to have it in logs, in, uh, in um, performance monitoring. So in that case, we can revoke PG stat statements, but even if a, a super user does, uh, you, you, want, uh, you don't want the super user to see it, uh, then better to set the key in a way that it cannot go to auditing or uh, PG stat statement or logging. And I'm just showing that to, to, to show that it's a possibility. Here I create a function that sets the key. I just pass the, 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 the key uh, for it. And it will call a, a, an execute but with a bind variable. And then if I set it, so that's my function. I grant the function to the user and I can set the key. So I've set a different key here just to, to, to show that this one will never be visible in PG stat statement. And if I connect us, uh, even the super user, I select PG stat statement. I can see my uh, key before uh, I use the function, but the one I used to set with my function, the new secret key is not visible anywhere. So that's the, 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 the thing to take care. Um, you set a key for, for your session and then just be careful to set it in a way that it's not visible by the monitoring, for example. And uh, that this is also the reason why, why we use the prepared statements. I'm always amazed at that. Uh... How many places, you know, the functions and these things just like really help <laughs> in most unexpected. Yeah, it's all a combination of, of features, and so and then features. you see, oh, I see the value, but but there are features to do that, and 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 all that is not difficult. Just need to know that there are features for that, uh, and and that's come from from Postgres because Postgres is there for years and years and years, and uh, prepared statement. Uh, it's for performance, but it's for also to avoid uh, SQL injection. It's also to avoid uh, uh, exposing the values like that. So, yeah. Fantastic. Yeah, fantastic. 
Okay. And um, like, a, I think these are just a couple of many features, right? Like that will help you achieve security from within, from the architecture of the application. Um, I mean, we don't need to go into the details. They're obviously sometimes covered in other YFTDs or we'll cover them in future. But can you talk about a couple of others, Frank, that can help people design security into the application? Like RLS is one, this is another, uh, client-side encryption is another. What are, what are yeah, the, the, the thing that is important is really to understand what we want to protect. So uh, encryption at, at rest, uh, also encryption in, uh, in the network, because here I've set a key, I, I don't want anyone to see my key. So if my uh, client connects to the database without SSL, then this key may be visible on the network. So we need to think about all different levels. And, uh, and and the best way, but, but you, you, you know more about the, the roadmap, the best way is to encrypt it from the client side. And if it can be done transparently, the idea of all that also is that you don't want to, to have more code in your application. You don't want to have more complexity in your application. Uh, you just want to enable those features. Yeah, because and, even uh, in this example, you're simply taking a key from somewhere and calling a function, which I think somebody else can inject that transparently, right? Yeah. So, uh, so I think we have in the roadmap the the, uh, the encryption on client side and automated by by the smart driver because we we have also a fork of the of the Postgres drivers, uh, doing more more interesting stuff uh, when, when connected to a gigabyte. Um, database fantastic awesome awesome other um i think uh, other questions folks um i think we're almost at time but any other questions for frank like we started the conversation with uh what of this uh, oracle does and it turns out it does do some of these things but i think where a database like yugabyte db gets interesting is when you include like or when you factor in things like how can you geographically disperse data and like that's also a security requirement that has to be built from within right like like row level geo partitioning that type of stuff it starts to get really interesting right yeah different feature but but they all combine because uh yeah of course if you if if you geo partition and and, and you you have to think also about the legal rules and and you have to to think about security and the network between them and uh, yeah absolutely all right, so looks like uh, no questions. Uh, we are at time, so thanks a lot, Frank. Really appreciate it. I think uh, it's quite fascinating to see, you know, how much the world of databases has moved forward from just being a database to enabling so much on the application side and taking away some of the burdens as SLAs, right? Even whether it's security or whether it's performance or so many things, it's just really amazing and fascinating, right? So, but uh, thank you, thank you for your time, Frank. Thanks everybody for joining us. Uh, please join us next week, you know, same place, same time. And, uh, you know, uh, in the meanwhile, if you guys have questions, please feel free to add it as LinkedIn comments. Frank will get back to you or, uh, you know, add, join our community Slack, yugabyte.com slash Slack and go to the YFTT channel. We'll get back to you there. Or, you know, in, the, in Frank's case, you know how to get a hold of him. He's on Twitter also. So <laughs> thank you. Thanks, everybody. Thank you.